Welcome back to The Explainer. Tonight, the big topic of discussion, what we're trying to understand is the housing levy uh, of 3% that has been proposed by the Kenya Kwanzaa administration for the coming financial year. My experts are still with me, but this is something I want us to take a look at. This is not the first time uh, we are having the issue of affordable housing in the country. In fact, President Uhuru Kenyatta did have an affordable housing program, and this was his plan to build 500,000 homes per year, but they only ended up building about 50,000 houses in a total of five years. So that deficit was still not met. Those number of houses they wanted to build were not met. And that is why today the question is, will this new plan to build more affordable houses be feasible? My guests are still with me. So Professor Omenya, we have been down this road before. Um, talk to us about why we were not able to build those half a million houses a year. This is actually very interesting, and uh, we, we actually did look at uh, possibilities. And that's why we're saying that government has already tried this, mm -hmm. and not just with affordable housing, they also tried police housing. And uh, uh, in the case of police housing, government had all the resources they, they needed. Even for the affordable housing, government did have. So, so, so why, why did we build uh, you know, only 50,000 houses, which is actually uh, a, an upper limit? Uh, actually, actually, government built a lot less than that. Um, and, 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 and this is a question that we're actually you know, trying to engage with here, that uh, in the first instance, why is government trying to build these houses, a national government for, the, for that particular reason? And, uh, and um, Yvonne, uh, again, uh, as you've suggested, um, this is not the first time government is trying to do, to do this. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, from independence, um, government used to provide housing for, for workers. Yes. Uh, every single parastatal provided housing for workers. The local authorities provided houses. Uh, you know, mainstream government ministries provided houses. Wh why did they stop? They stopped because it made sense. They were not able to pr first keep up with the numbers. Then they were not able to provide the quality. Then they were not able to maintain the, the, those sort of environments. This was not a specific challenge of Kenyan governments. This is the same thing that was happening in the US, is the same thing that was happening in the UK in, in social housing and so on. And government decided that what they will do is to give civil servants, uh, 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 you know, um, house allowance so that then they're able to find solutions in the market. So at, at what point did this wisdom come in where, where, where national government decided that they're, that they're the best in terms of solving uh, this housing problem in the first instance? I don't even know why we, why, we, why we're discussing this. I don't even know why the president is discussing this, this in state house. The entire housing function is devolved. That's a devolved function in the constitution. So why is national government trying to, trying to build houses or even facilitate the building of houses in the first instance? This is not their role. It is not their function. Mm -hmm. That same government did actually, um, uh, 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 the world government, um, a, a very elaborate study by, by, by KPMG. And, and, and housing was actually, I think, number nine in terms of priorities of Kenyans. So why did they pick it? This is the issue. Number one, government is not even able to build the houses that they actually want, that they, that they, that they're saying they're going to build. Yeah. They're not able to do it. This particular government and even the previous one, and they do have that evidence. Government knows exactly what works. Uh, these civil servants uh, the, uh, that are meant to be uh, contributing the, yeah. the, the, the 6%, the mm -hmm. 3 and 3, and uh, the private sector, what is the housing situation? Is the housing situation so dire that, uh, that, that, that then, you know, we, so, we need to put this mechanism? So what you're saying is, do they want to affordable houses that they can rent or do they want to own? Exactly. And, 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 and even further, you know, we're going, we're being more fundamental here. Yeah. We're saying... Where is the housing need? The housing need, Yvonne, according to studies by the same government, is not, is not amongst the civil, uh, civil servants and not even amongst those working in the private sector. The biggest housing need is actually for, for the unemployed Kenyans who are either homeless or, or, or are living in... Now, in, in, here's in, the counter-prof. The right. president does acknowledge right. that and says that you right. and I and everybody who has a right. payslip should now contribute the money to provide housing for those in informal work Thank you. who don't have a salary um, and who therefore deserve uh, the dignity of owning a home. Yes, and, 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 and that's what uh, we are actually agreeing with the president that there's a need, but we're disagreeing with the president on how to approach it. You see, uh, and, and again, the president and his people should understand this from an expert. 
there's a distinction between houses and housing. Housing, housing, housing is that all those infrastructures and services that make uh, the living environment you know, you know, possible. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't solve the housing problem with houses. In fact, and the government knows that. You know, you don't solve this problem by building houses. What you do, what you need to do mm -hmm. is to put infrastructure, put roads, bring in water, bring in uh, uh, social amenities, uh, and so on. People will build houses for themselves. Nobody solves a housing problem by building houses. Okay. The other issue, Dr. Rugo, is um, you say this is a governance issue. Yeah. So this is not just about the 3% and, and, and you know, all these numbers that we're talking about, whether you'll be able to own a house in mm. 25 years, 50 years, or 90 years. I've seen <laughs> uh, varying uh, mathematic uh, problems being put out there. Why is this a governance issue for you? Yeah, first of all, I think it's a governance issue because uh, and not just this government, uh, our government in Kenya uh, is facing a huge trust deficit. Uh, Kenyans don't trust their government. And they have a reason not to trust their government because when you are told that um, you know out of uh, you know out of every two thousand shillings uh, that uh, you know you give to government in terms of taxes, mm -hmm. seven hundred and thirty disappears. You know that's a small language for saying out of two trillion, seven hundred and thirty billion disappears. Mm -hmm. Uh, the big question is: so are you asking us to give more money so that then it disappears? Two. I don't think you can actually uh, uh, pursue this line without first of all setting out regulations. The law, the way it says, is that the the finance, uh, the, the, pump, the, the, the the cabinet secretary mm -hmm. in charge of uh, housing at the national level, yeah. and the one for uh, finance will come up with regulations as to who qualifies for affordable housing. Uh -huh. But there's no assurance, when you read through the fine print of what at least we have, there's no assurance that first of all, uh, you will qualify. Because the affordable housing argument is for the people who are contributing. Mm -hmm. The social housing is then for the people that uh, you know, uh, uh, do not afford. Yet that is not their greatest need. As we have seen with the slum upgrading programs, mm -hmm. a lot of the people who were given those houses, rented, rented them, them. Correct. Yeah. because their problem was not owning a house. Correct. It was an income problem. Right. Mm. And you see, when you look at this, and I was just looking at, at the calculation, the housing discussion is also coming at the tail of increment in NHIF contributions right. for the housing fund, I mean the hospital insurance fund, sorry, health insurance fund now, yeah. which has been riddled with corruption. We've had change of management, I think, almost uh, three, four times in the last five years uh, because, again, of each group comes and it lives with scandals. Mm. The uh, National Social Security uh, Fund, mm. uh, the NSSF, again, has got a lot, it's also meant to, to, to go up. Uh, uh, you know, other taxes are also meant to, 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 to go up. Yet you are not seeing a commensurate in terms of service service provision. So I say this is a governor. It's not just about numbers. It's not just about me contributing 3% to help X, who I do not know. Um, I think I would gladly do it if I knew that that money was going into the right place. Correct. Two, when you tell me that uh, uh, after seven years yeah. uh, of contributing my, my 420,000, yeah. I will have access to it or I will transfer it to a retirement benefit scheme. Uh, and there might be an interest. Unless that interest is above 10%, our inflation rate on average from 1963 to 2021 has been at 10%. Are you assuring me you'll give me an 11% return? Otherwise, I am actually running a loss-making business, if at all I'm saving. You know? And if I want to withdraw my money, why should I, you know, I will be withdrawing a loss? You know, in other words, I make a contributory scheme uh -huh. for a house that, of course, even from the numbers, yeah. I will not get that house, yeah. you know. Uh, and therefore, that's why I'm saying this in totality must be seen for what it is, must be seen in terms of ensuring. The role of government is to ensure that Kenyans have got proper house. And what Prof was saying is that once, you are once Kenyans have incomes, and that is the most, they will choose where they want to Correct. live, how they want to. I may be in the urban area. And how much they want to pay for it. Exactly. I Precisely. Want to, I want you to hold on that yeah. issue of uh, seven years for just a moment uh, because I want us to get a little bit more understanding on it. Um, let's just take a look at what those numbers and statistics are right here. So what that fund proposes is that if in seven years 
two things happen. One, you're no longer interested in continuing with the saving, or two, you do not qualify for the affordable housing program, then these are your options, that you can transfer the money to a pension scheme, you can transfer it to another person who is registered, or you can actually cash out and get back all your savings. Yes, but one of the issues with this one is that that cashing out is actually subjected to tax. But taxation at the time. At the time of At withdrawal. the time of withdrawal. Okay. Right. One is that you are not being allowed to withdraw. So first of all, at what point do you know you are not qualified for affordable housing? Yeah. Is it after seven years? Is it after three years? Is it after four years? Two. And if you're qualified, will you get it? Precisely. You know, and, and at what point? And as we have said, we've done the math. Yeah. If you qualify for the affordable housing, unless you are shooting for 50 years, yeah. uh, you know, when you can actually own it. Correct. You know, uh, then, then. But more importantly, when you look at the numbers of the number of Kenyans who belong to SACOs, right. and the over 400 billion uh, that is held in SACOs, and the percentage, two, if you look at the proposals that were made on the retirement benefit scheme, this one that you are supposed to transfer your money to, yes, yes. Right. of ensure using that collateral yeah. as the collateral for mortgages, there's a proposal that, like that, yeah. lying in parliament. Right. Yes. Why don't you activate that so Correct. that then, you see, you see needs, needs, needs move. Let me go right. back to my colleague, my 23-year-old colleague. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, he may need a studio because he's by himself. Correct. But in seven years' time, when he perhaps has married and is Correct. looking forward to having children, he's thinking about a bigger house. Mm. In other words, you give social mobility through the savings, because we are already contributing. Mm -hmm. And as we have said, NSSF amounts are already being increased, yeah. as we talk. So, so it's not like there are no options that are safer, that are more trusted, and Kenyans are actually, you know, they had the argument the other day that uh, it's, it's to encourage a saving culture. Yeah. Kenyans save. You know, what they want is an assured mechanism that they first of all can withdraw their money Correct. if they so wish. Because this is, this is a volume. Does it feel like double taxation? Um, just Forced right? taxation. I think okay. It, 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 because it, when you get your money out, again, you will be taxed. You will be taxed. And this you know, feels like. Yeah, so, 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 okay. so, 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 so I, think, I think it's really a forced thing for a need that you are not trying to meet. Uh, and just okay. like uh, Dr. Shari is highlighting yeah. here, uh, what is the mechanism of, of managing this thing? Uh -huh. over 30 years. Okay. And again, going back to what government has done. In fact, if, if, if government was serious, then, then with, the, with the houses they've yeah. already built, eh, um, the, 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 they should have tried this 30-year mortgage yeah. or even the 100-year one. Mm -hmm. that, all those houses are delivered through a PPP arrangement. Mm. The private sector that's coming in, uh, any, any investor in housing, uh, I can tell you, they want to cash out as quickly yes, as possible. Uh, as possible. But the all plan, those, they say, all is that the, the government will pay the developer. Why and the developer they, will take the money, go their why way, and develop other houses. Why are testing that now? Okay. Yeah. Because all the houses they've done, eh, the payment periods is just between, uh, in, in fact, a maximum of four years. Four years, not not even twenty. So I mean, how much money will you need to pay so that you own a, th a three million house or or a four million house in four years? Mm -hmm. In fact. First, the down payment you need is exactly about 25 to 30, uh, to 30 thousand. So you must actually have about a million actually mm. to be able to to be able to get this house. And then after that, you know, um, it's like buying a car. So so if government is serious about these things, then they should actually put those mechanisms. We need to see government buying off all those people mm. with the money they already have in Bumayangu, and and starting to say that okay, fine, okay. we are going to give this person yeah. um, a, a thirty-year mortgage. Otherwise, otherwise we have no basis to believe you know what uh, what government is proposing to the people. Yeah, mm. and also I think it's it's, it's important for us to uh, uh, you know point out the reasons wh what government has given as reasons yeah. in the past why they did not. The first thing they cite is the cost of land in urban areas. Right. Yes. Because this is not necessarily land that government owns. Yeah. Right. They have to buy. They have to buy to buy. Correct. It. And they have pointed out in the BP. I think the last two three years. Correct. They said cost of of land yes. is a big. Is prohibitive. Correct. You know, it's, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, for you to be able to buy it and therefore be able to. And then all the other it's necessary bad. infrastructure. Yeah. You know, and when you look at how cities are developing, people are not necessarily coming to live in the city center. They are going basically to you know to the extremes uh, of, of the city because then they are assured of other amenities, you know, space for their children, uh, uh, and a lot of people are organizing. So for me, my argument is that first of all, you need to see this in the totality of everything else. Mm -hmm. Two, 
unless the governance challenge of abuse of public resources is fixed and sorted out, then there's every reason not to trust uh, this. And the fact that it's being pushed so hard, the president made a very strong appeal, we need to care about our brothers, we need to care about our sisters. Every salaried Kenyan runs a welfare system in this country. They still take care of their brothers, they still take care of their sisters, they still take care of you know, medical bills, and all, and all these are public services. Which, which should be provided Which should be provided already. Okay. No, we still provide for them in a, yeah. in a, in a, in a, in a way. So, so I, I, and, and when you see um, uh, 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 you know, a, a, an argument that, first of all, is not even clear in terms of the regulations, uh, in terms of what exactly is this that we are contributing to, who is contributing, how is it contributing, but lastly, what does this mean in terms of the cost of doing business? But, it, but Employers see, are complaining, but, uh, the, the Federation of Kenya Employers, as well as other people who made uh, their presentations at the public hearings today, talked about you know, employers now also having to correct. Um, you know, increase their cost of doing business, which exactly. is an additional 3% um, contribution. Is but again, I just wanted to highlight, uh, yeah. piggybacking on what uh, Dr. Tari is highlighting there. Um, you see, government is saying that they, that they want to solve this housing problem for the poor. Yeah. But again, what is very interesting, I mean, and, and for people who are in this field, um, you are looking at social housing, and, and, and Kenya is doing a new, in fact, redefining terms. Mm. There is nobody on earth who has ever done social housing that is based on home ownership. What is social housing? Social housing, as we close. social housing is yeah. actually housing for the poorest in society. And how is Those that? are people in the welfare uh, uh, segment. Okay. There is no, in fact, the definition of social housing is subsidized rental housing by government. Kenya is introducing a new definition of housing. I personally wrote the definition of, of housing term for the Republic of South Africa that defines social housing. And, and, and social, so, so we're coming in. What you're saying is that this person actually has a, cannot even meet their basic needs. This person has no food. Then you're telling us that this person will pay a mortgage for these many years in the market to own the house. That is insanity. Nobody has tried to do that. In fact, uh, whether you look at neoliberal political economies that are market-based, whether you look at socialist economies uh, that, are, that are off the market, basically uh, the, the solution, the solution for, pe for people in the welfare segment mm -hmm. does not include ownership. In fact, it includes facilitating them. Secondly, yeah. in the Kenyan situation, we have very many poor people. So how many houses will, will you build for these people? And that's what, what we're saying. If you, is, but, but yet it's, it's possible to actually provide water for these people yeah. and, and, and improve lives of very many people. It is actually possible to provide you know, health infrastructure for these people. It's actually possible to provide uh, you know, system, uh, yeah. uh, 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 access and education systems and so on. Right. And eventually this is what improves the overall quality of lives for majority of people. This instrument that the government is trying to use is insane. In fact, as an expert in this field, I find it insane. Just, even just on the basic um, understanding mm -hmm. of these concepts uh, globally, non-disputed concepts, okay. like social housing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. And what social housing is, you know, Indeed. housing, and what housing is. Housing versus houses. They, they don't even know. Governance what issues. Levies yes. and what le uh, levies, and taxes. taxes. I mean, yeah. So all of these I, things. I would recommend that government uh, actually spends just a day defining these terms. <laughs> like, sorry, what okay, is prof. Defining the terms. All right. mean. This is what happens. Then, then, then we can have an idea. This is what happens when you have a doctor and a professor. <laughs> I literally just have 30 seconds for you, doctor. Yeah. Just for 30 me, seconds. I think let us address the trust deficit question. Yeah. Okay. Two. Let us not increase the cost of business. Mm -hmm. And three, let us not increase the cost of government, which is already very high. Mm. Yeah, because there is a maintenance factor of that social housing. There is all these things that you want to do. But most importantly, let us work to build the incomes of Kenyans so that they can live the lives and the dreams they wish to pursue. Indeed, Dr. Abraham Rugo, who's the country director for International Budget Partnerships. And we've got Professor Alfred Omenya, who's an urban planning and housing expert. Gentlemen, thank you for that. Many questions still. That's the divide different. continues. The debate continues. But hopefully we'll get some more explanations because we understand uh, the PS for housing. That's Charles Hinger is actually having um, a big address tomorrow to the nation to help us understand this and perhaps he'll have some more answers and some more explanations.